My name is Javad Parvizi. I'm a professor of orthopedic surgery at Thomas Jefferson University at Rothman Institute. First case is a patient of my own. I did a total knee replacement on this gentleman about four years ago. He was doing fine. Over the weekend, one weekend, his wife called me to say that his knee was really hot and red and he was in a lot of pain. So I asked him to bring the patient to the ER. They couldn't find transport to bring the patient to Jefferson. They took the patient to another facility. The knee was aspirated and the treating physician called me and gave me results which was definitely indicative of infection. Cell count of 92,000, neutrophil differential of 85%, and obviously red hot swollen knee. Obviously, we decided to go ahead and take the uh, knee and resect it. The wife didn't want the patient to have the procedure done in the other facility, so the patient got transferred to Jefferson. At Jefferson, we aspirated the knee again to confirm those numbers, and we sent the samples for culture. We took the patient to the, to the operating room, resected his knee, and put an antibiotic cement spacer. Culture from the first facility, culture from the aspiration, culture from the intraoperative samples of tissue and fluid, all came back as negative day 14. So we were completely lost as to what was causing this gentleman's infection. We sent the sample as part of the study to Pathogenius. And the results we got was 99% Streptococcus canis. I've never had an experience of dealing with periprosthetic joint infection caused by Streptococcus canis. But I'm aware of it as being a pathogen and of course associated with dogs. When we communicated this with the patient's wife, we heard that the patient had sustained a laceration to the same extremity about two weeks prior, and the dog they had there at home had been licking the wound throughout that process. So excellent and very, very enlightening information. So we actually had to go back, change the antibiotic, and that day we did, the patient turned around. Suddenly the ESR and CRP started to decline, the patient did extremely well, and we also shared that information with the patient and the patient's wife. And it's amazing that they were also able to uh, observe how the patient uh, had a great progress. I really feel that the pathogenist could give you further information that you probably are not going to be able to get from cultures.